All right. If you look on the back of your bulletin, our topic that we're going to talk to today is loving others. Loving others. Um, now, uh, we talked about last week how Jesus said that our righteousness should exceed that of the Pharisees. And we're going to kind of take that a little step further today is the Pharisees, you know, when they did their acts of righteousness, they, they kind of really nailed it as far as the outward things. I mean, they had the ceremonies down, they had the, the clothes, they had the, the, the prayers, the phylacteries, all that stuff. But in their hearts was a lot of evil, a lot of wickedness. Jesus, Jesus even told them, said, you know what, you're, you're like whitewashed sepulchers, you're just full of dead men's bones. And so when we talk about loving others, uh, even though love is manifested by outward things, uh, we also want to talk about the inward attitudes of our hearts. And the reason why I want to bring that up today is because we are entering uh, into our, we're kind of in the middle, but we're kind of getting into the, really the holiday seasons, okay? And what that means is that you will be given an opportunity to love people that you don't necessarily like. Amen. Amen. Because a lot of times when we think of loving people, we look at loving as just uh, a, a whole lot of liking, you know. And loving someone and liking someone are two completely different things. Because one has to do with an emotion and the other one has to do with an action. Amen. And uh, the Pharisees had a, a form of religiousness, but they failed in loving people because the things that they did were for themselves only and their own sense of religiosity rather than true concern and care uh, for the people around them. So, that being said, let's take a look at Matthew chapter 22, and we're going to start in verse 36. Now, a uh, very familiar set of scripture. A uh, lawyer asks him, it says, Teacher, which is the great commandment of the law? He said, you'll love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. Absolutely. you got to have this down first. All right. It doesn't say you shall understand the Lord. You shall like the Lord. It says you'll love the Lord. Okay. The second is like this. You'll love your neighbor and yourself. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. Now, there are a lot of people who come to church or they, maybe they, they're contemplating giving their lives to the Lord, and they're thinking, man, what does God want from me? What's he going to require of me? Well, I want to tell you, first off, he wants you to love him with everything that, that you have. And secondly, he wants you to love other folks too, just like you love yourself. And if you can, if you can do those two things, everything else is going to come into play. All right? Now, love is putting someone above yourself, basically, okay? It's what we refer to in the business as selflessness. We are called to and anointed to live a selfless life, okay? Uh, in fact, it tells us in, in Romans chapter 5, uh, in verse 5, it says, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. God has anointed you and I with His Spirit, and we have the ability to love folks. Please understand that. I, I've run across people all for, for years that say, well, I just, I just can't. I, you know, People aren't my thing. I get it. People weren't my thing neither when I first started out. All right? I'd always show up to a party early so I can get the best corner, you know. <laughs> and so, you know, I wasn't really into socializing or, or talking to other folks and things like that. But as we grow and as we mature and as the Spirit of God, we, we give Him yield to our li we yield our lives to Him, we find ourselves loving other people. Okay? You cannot help but do it. Now, once selflessness is accomplished, we find that when we serve others, it actually pleases us. And we find our greatest satisfaction and our greatest fulfillment in serving other people. 
Why? Because we're living a life that the Holy Spirit was given to us to do. Okay? Now, over in the, the Gospel of John, let's take a look at that in chapter 13. We're going to look in verse 34. And uh, he says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I loved you, that you also love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Now, loving one another was not a new commandment, but Jesus ups the ante. He says, I want you to love them like I loved you. Now, at the time, all right, that didn't seem like a hard thing to do because Jesus was, he was leading them, he was providing for them. Uh, when the Pharisees and, and the different religious leaders would come and they try to stir up trouble, he'd put them in their place. I mean, you know, at the time, it's like, okay, I can do this. Well, we fast forward to the time when Jesus takes communion with the disciples. He begins to wash their feet. And they're like, oh, wait a, wait a minute. You want me to do this? Have you seen his feet? They stink, Lord. You want me to do that? When he talks about sacrificing for others, especially those that you don't think deserve it? Okay, let's cut to the chase. Nobody deserves it, so we're all in the same boat, all right? Now things take a different meaning to it. But he has called us to love others like he loved us. And that love was sacrificial. That love was, was putting one's rights aside for the sake of the others. In Romans 5.8 it says, But God demonstrates his own love towards us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. All right, God demonstrated. He said, this is, this is something I'm going to show you on how to do this. Now, please understand something. Love is, is not necessarily a feeling, all right? Uh, as the old song says, it's more than a feeling. Uh, thank you for those who are old enough to get that. Uh, you can Google that if you're not sure later. Uh, but love, love is an action. Now, there are times when feelings will follow, okay? And it, believe, it, believe it or not, it's a lot harder to love people when you actually do like them, all right? It's, it's easier to love someone when you have feelings of fondness towards them. And that's why it's important. The Bible says that when we have ought against someone, that we're to, to deal with that right away, okay? Because that ought, that, that attitude that we have towards someone impedes our ability to be obedient to the Lord because he's called us to love one another, all right? Um, I've, I've, I've mentioned this before in the past, and it bears repeating today. Uh, when we first started the church, we were meeting over at the Civic Center, and we had about, oh, about 12 people uh, coming, and, and I was doing worship, and uh, it was one of those days where all of a sudden you just feel the presence of God, and, and it's like, oh, my gosh, God, this is awesome. I could feel the presence of God. We're worshiping. This is great. And it was one of those times where you could do anything and it'd be right. You know, you could, you could, you could say, we're going to light our hair on fire. And God would say, yes. You know, it's just one of those just crazy days where you knew that whatever it was, it was going to work. And I'm, 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 I'm in my mind, I'm, I'm going through the song and I'm praying. I'm, I'm like, Lord, this is awesome. I, I, I feel your presence here. This is great. What do you want us to do? You want us to pray for the sick? You want us to cast out devils? What do, you, what do you want to do? And the Lord said, I want you to forgive this person. He named someone that I went to high school with. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I don't even know if they're still alive. All right. This was 30 years ago. Okay, chances are they're still, they were still alive. All right. When I was in high school, I had planned to kill them, and I wanted to. I had murder in my heart towards them. And as much as, as a new, no, well, I wasn't a new Christian by then. I've been a Christian for a while. I'd seen the power of God. I'd, I'd grown in the word. That was still attached to me. 
And the reason I know it was attached to me because I didn't want to do it. And the whole time I'm sitting there going, God, are you sure? You know, is this the devil? I was like, what a dumb thing to say, you know. And the Lord said, you, you asked me what I wanted. That's it. Don't ask me again. Nobody else in the room had a clue what was going on. Nobody knew what was happening in, in, inside of me. But God freed me that day from a, from a thing that the enemy had tried to keep attached to me. Because when we hold ought against other people, it chains us down. And God wants us to be free. Okay. No one is unlovable because it's our choice to love them. Okay, please understand that. And I found out that out that day. It was a choice. I had a choice. Did I did I feel this warm fuzzy towards them? No. No. As time went on, God challenged me to pray for them. Pray for their salvation, pray for the salvation of their families. And as that time came, I can do that now with, with, with great affection for them. Not because of anything other than the fact that it, it was the Lord. Okay? But no one is unlovable because it's our choice whether or not we love them. And it's our obedience to the Lord that we say yes, and He empowers us by His Spirit to step out and accomplish those things. See, love, now, love is not indulgence. Please understand that. A lot of people think love is giving somebody whatever they want. That's not love. Love is not indulgence. Love is not appeasing of someone's own guilt. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to love you because I feel guilty. That's not love. That's what we refer to as manipulation. Okay. Love is not giving in manipulation. Love is not overlooking sinful behavior. Love is simply doing what's right towards other people, okay? Doing what's right with no strings attached other than wanting to serve and please the Lord. I, I mentioned this last week. I, I read a testimony of a, of a pastor. He was driving down the road, and, and there was a fella that was, uh, had his thumb out, and he looked kind of <laughs> kind of shady, you know. And the pastor said, Lord, I'm going to give this guy a ride, and, and, and I'm going to tell him, about, you know, hopefully he'll get saved. And the Lord, he said, the Lord spoke to him and said, why don't you give him a ride because he needs one. When we, when we attach strings to things, we've gone, gone beyond the true meaning of what God has called us to do. Trust me, if you, you, if you uh, begin to reach out and, and, and love someone and to, and to try to serve them. The Holy Spirit wants them saved more than you do. He'll bring about the conversation. You don't have to worry about that. He'll bring about the circumstances. You just be faithful to do what the Lord tells you to do. Okay? We've talked about this before, and it bears repeating again. There's a difference between love and lust. Love is doing for others at the expense of yourself because its motivation is to give. Lust is doing for self at the expense of others because your motivation is to get. And you can use that as a template when you're deciding, well, am I, am I being loving or not? Okay. Now, some people would say, uh, well, Pastor, uh, are you telling me that I should sacrifice my own life for other people? No. You know why? Because you don't own your life anymore. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who's in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Because you've been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God with your body. See, my life is not my own. I'm not giving my life for someone else. I gave my life to the Lord years ago. My life is no longer mine to do with what I want. The qu real question is, is how much of my life belongs to the Lord? And how much do I trust God with my life? So when he says, I want you to do this thing, then I go, Lord, are you, gonna, are you jerking me around? Are you, are, you, are you trying to hurt me? 
No, God never, never will hurt us. Over in, in Acts chapter 20 and verse 24, it's not in your notes, but we'll take a look at that anyhow. Paul, as he's getting ready to leave Ephesus, he says, I do not consider my life of any account dear to myself, so that I may finish the course and the ministry which I received from the Lord to testify solemnly of the gospel of the grace of God. So, how, as a, as a person living today, how do, I, how do I effectively love other folks the way God wants me to? Well, first off, it helps if you try to understand what it's like to be in their shoes. You know, we, the Bible tells us not to judge one another. But yet, we find ourselves doing that quite a bit. All right? Much, as much as we don't want to, we struggle with that. But if we recognize it and take it to the Lord, He helps us. All right? And He strengthens us and helps us to get over it. All right? Um, there are many reasons why people are the way they are. Now, a lot of it is choices that they have made. Okay? Please understand that. A lot of people are in the situation they're in because they've just made some very foolish choices in life. Okay? Some folks have had choices made for them when they were younger, uh, through circumstances uh, of life. Some choices have been made for them. All right? But understand something. Every person starts out as a child. And that might be one reason why the Lord tells us that we are to come to him as children. And not only to come to him as children, but to recognize them as a child of God. A child that God has desired to be saved. Okay. Now, once again, it does not mean that you excuse sin. It doesn't mean you, call, you don't call out sin for what it is. That's what we do with children. We say, hey, this behavior is wrong, and we bring correction to that. The last thing you ever want to do is indulge a child when they're misbehaving. Okay? Then you end up with a whole lot more problem later on. Okay? Over in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 44, he says, uh, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. What? Oh, man. Yes, I said, there we go. But I say, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes the sun to rise on the evil and good. He sends the rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. You know why he does that? Because he's a God of justice. Okay? He's a God of justice. For if you love only those who love you, what reward do you have? Don't even the tax collectors do the same? We find ourselves struggling with you know, as much as we don't, we, we kind of click up and we get in little herds and groups and, and you know, we, we like to stay within our, our group and, and we don't really like to go outside of that. And sometimes we don't even like bringing other folks into it. But God has called us to be the body of Christ universal. Okay? Which brings us to the second thing. We want to see them as God sees them. We already talked about this uh, he demonstrated his love that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible tells us that in John uh, 3, 16 and 17, that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. For he did not send his son uh, uh, to condemn the world, but that the world through him could be saved. All right. 1 John 4 and verse 7, it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this, the love of God was manifested in us, that God sent His only begotten Son in the world, that we might live through Him. In this love, okay, not that we love God, but He loved us first and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to also love one another. No one has ever uh, seen God at any time. But if we love one another, God abides in us and His love is perfected in us. You say, well, 
God, I, 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 I've, never, I've never seen God. I want to love God. Well, how can I do that? Well, one way is by one another. We haven't seen God, but you know what? God lives in us. And when we, when we love and serve one another, we show ourselves to be disciples of the Lord. Now, once again, it's good if you can like someone when you do this, but sometimes that's hard to do. There are people in the body of Christ who will go home today, all right, when I say the body of Christ, I mean the whole body of Christ, not, not you guys. No. They're going to go home today, and it's going to be World War III in their household. They look at their children and they go, I don't even like you anymore. You know, husbands and wives, they look at each other and say, I can't stand you. There was a time when oh, I felt differently, but right now, it's not there. What do you do? You love them. You love them because God has commanded you to love them. And love sets aside its own rights for the rights of someone else. And as we find when we begin to do that, that many times, not all the time, but many times the feelings do follow. Why? Because we're showing the kindness and the mercy that God has anointed us to do. And any time you please God, it's going to make your life a lot better. Okay. Which brings us to the third thing. There's one thing that makes it a little easier to do is when we look at them as Jesus in disguise. Okay. Jump over to Matthew chapter 25. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 25. In verse 40, it goes through all the things that he said, you know, yeah, 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 yeah I was naked and you clothed me, I was hungry and you fed me, I was uh, this and you brought me in, and a stranger and you brought me in, all these things. And they said, you know, what, 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 when did we do any of this? The king will answer and say to them, truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these brethren of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. Okay. He says, even when you did it to the least of these, that one that irritates you, amen? Because we've all got somebody in our lives that does that, amen? amen. <laughs> Some of us have more than one. Some of us are that guy, you know, okay? But when we submit ourselves unto the Lord and say, Lord, use me, he says, I will, but it's going to cost you means you're going to have to, as what the Bible says, take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow him. The cross is a very painful experience because it brings death. And thank God it does. Because there's a lot of things in my past I wish to die to. Amen? And if I want to experience eternal life, I need to. So, question comes up. All right, you're telling me, as, especially as we're getting in here, we're, we're going to experience this. You're going to experience it in your homes. You're going to experience it at work. You're going to experience it in the stores. You're going to experience it in church. You know, uh, some of you are experiencing right now. <laughs> okay. What do I do if I struggle to like somebody, if I struggle to do right to them? Because love is doing what's right for them. What if, I, what if I struggle to do that? Okay, good question. Very good question. Romans 13.10 says, love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is a fulfillment of the law. We start, all right, if you struggle to do right by some, we start with that by not doing wrong. Okay? That's how we start. We start by not doing wrong. So when you're tempted to slander them, you don't. When you're tempted to gossip about them, you don't. When you have an opportunity to see them get their comeuppance, you refrain from that. If you struggle to do right, we start by not doing wrong. Okay? 
Matthew 7, 12 says, And everything, therefore, treat people the same way you want them to treat you, for this is the law and the prophets. I don't have to worry about whether or not I should badmouth somebody because you know what? I don't like being badmouthed myself. I don't have to worry about whether or not I should ignore someone's hardship because I wouldn't want to be ignored myself. I don't have to worry about whether or not I should help someone because you know what? I kind of like to get help now and then. All right? I was real glad to have that this morning. And so what we do is we, we, we want to get to this place where we say, Lord, I want to treat folks the way that I want to be treated. Now, understand there are a few crazy people out there that says, I like pain. They're wacko, okay, all right? You know, don't, don't fall into that. But generally speaking, say, Lord, help me to love one another and loving them is simply just treating them the way you want to be treated. Okay? All right. So, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to have a little moment of worship. And then I want to encourage you, first off, first off, say, th- ask yourself, Lord, is there, is there anybody I'm really you know, kind of got an attitude towards that I need to deal with, all right? And if there is, just right now, just deal with it. Now, you might say, well, there's just a whole lot more uh, to it than what you realize. Probably, okay, probably. But it doesn't change anything. Lord, help me to deal with this, you know, and call them out by name. Don't call them out out loud, especially if they're standing next to you, all right? But begin to just say, Lord, help me to deal with this. And then, as you're walking through life, say, Lord, how can I manifest love towards somebody? How can I be kind to somebody that can't be kind back to me? How can I be gracious towards somebody who may not have the ability to be gracious back to me? And we will find that when we begin to to do those things, which many of you are already doing at this part of your life already, you'll find a certain satisfaction that comes because the Holy Spirit says, this is what I want.